hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we'll continue our discussion with uh, satellite communication in the previous video the first video we discussed some basic introductory concepts related to the working of the satellite communication systems in short so in this video we are going to discuss why do we need the satellite communication system it means what is the requirement of the satellite communication system what was wrong with the existing or the communication technique uh, before satellite communications came into play so for that we have to understand the commonly used communication techniques or signal propagation techniques okay so for that the various types of signal propagation techniques or wave propagation techniques we just have to understand them we'll discuss them in short so basically there are four types of signal or wave propagation uh, techniques or methods the ground wave propagation the sky wave propagation the space wave propagation and the scattering wave propagation in the ground wave propagation in this mode the signal it travels very close to the surface of the earth okay basically it reflects from the ground and through multiple of such reflections it reaches the end point the destination from the source to the destination and the frequency range of this mode of propagation is from 30 kilohertz to 3 megahertz now it is not in absolute terms it's just a reference okay it is not concrete it's a reference it can be a little bit lower on the left hand side and a little bit higher on the right hand side also okay just a reference value this is the ground wave propagation which happens very close to the surface of the earth through multiple reflections on the earth's surface then we have is the space wave propagation so in this mode the signal it travels from the sender to the receiver the transmitter to the receiver directly in straight paths okay it is called as the line of sight propagation okay and the frequency range is greater than 30 megahertz so if we want to understand them this is the two techniques the two modes ground wave propagation and the space wave propagation let's say we have the two uh, transmitting and receiving stations the ground wave propagation happens through the earth's surface it strikes the surface of the earth gets reflected and reaches the receiving station now here it just it is just one such reflection actually it takes multiple of such reflections to reach the end station and uh, the space wave propagation or the line of sight propagation as the definition says it the signal travels from the transmitter to the receiver in straight line paths that's why it is called as line of sight propagation it means the transmitting station is in the line of sight of the receiving stations both the stations are in visible line of sight okay straight line paths next we have is the sky wave propagation so in this mode the signals the travel from the transmitting antenna towards the atmosphere towards the sky that's why sky wave propagation and they get reflected from the f layer of the ionosphere okay ionosphere is the layer of uh, the atmosphere which consists of various ions which aid in the reflection of these signals and from the f layer of the ionosphere they are reflected back to the receiving antenna 
okay so this is the sky wave propagation the signal from the transmitting antenna moves or it travels towards the f layer of the ionosphere they get reflected from there to the receiving station okay this is the sky wave propagation and the frequency range of the sky wave propagation is from 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz okay 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz again it is not the concrete value it is just the uh, reference value it is not absolute then we have is this scattering wave propagation in this mode the signals from the transmitting station they get reflected from the E layer of the ionosphere back to the receiver okay in the uh, sky wave propagation it happens from the F layer and the scattering wave it happens from the E layer of the ionosphere same thing same technique but here it is the E layer of the ionosphere and the frequency range of this is from is greater than 300 megahertz so always pay attention to this frequency range here for ground wave it is from 30 kilohertz to 3 megahertz in space wave it is a little bit higher that is greater than 30 megahertz in sky wave it is from 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz and in the scattering wave it is greater than 300 megahertz okay so with each mode of propagation the frequency range is a uh, goes higher and higher now where does satellite communication come into play now in all those modes of propagation that we have discussed the ground the sky wave the space wave and the scattering wave it involves the earth's curvature the surface of the earth and the ground wave it uh, happens through striking the surface of the earth getting reflected back to the receiving station and it happens through multiple of such reflections in the other uh, three modes of propagation in space wave it happens in direct straight line paths and in sky wave and scattering wave it takes into play the E and F layer of the ionosphere now because of this the range of these modes of propagation is limited okay up to a several hundred kilometers but when it comes to the satellite communication systems okay the satellites are located at a much larger distance from the earth in space and here all these factors the earth's curvature ionosphere the various layers of ionosphere or atmosphere it goes out of the equation that's why the range the range goes very very high the range of transmission is very high which goes up to several several thousands of kilometers so that is where the satellite communication system is superior as compared to these modes of propagation also the frequency of satellite communication is in the range of gigahertz we have already discussed in the uplink and downlink frequency ranges the frequency range in satellite communication is very high it, uh, in the these modes of propagation it goes maximum up to megahertz but in satellite communication it is in the gigahertz range now we all know that the energy of a signal is directly proportional to its frequency so when the frequency range goes high the energy content of the signal will also be high so when the energy of the signal is high the range the traveling range it will also be high so that's where the satellite communications is uh, much more superior as compared to these modes of wave or signal propagation 
okay and because of these limitations the satellite communication system came into picture so this is the basic and core concept of the need of satellite communication so these are the some the concepts that are associated with it so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much